Over the years, I've been asked by many chaps who have my books as to why there are so many rifles and carbines in my books that have had the stocks cut back. And when I say the stocks cut back, the fore end of the rifle stock or the carbine stock is often cut back. And I have an example here today where um, in this instance here, uh, the burger has removed the mid barrel band and the front barrel band. And as you can see, he's cut off the fore end. He's also removed the hand guide, which is sort of fairly unusual. But you get a, a large variety of these. Some are very, very uh, neatly done. Some are extremely crude. In most cases, they tend to leave, I'm talking about an M95 Mauser rifle now, they tend to leave the mid barrel band uh, in situ and then cut the stock just in front of that. Now, as I said, some of them uh, go to the trouble of actually shaping the, the, the fore end like this. Others have just got a, a, a complete cut and they're actually very, very ugly. Uh, the reason for this, I believe, is that, as I've mentioned in my books, the Boers were a hunting nation. They were out on isolated farms um, at that stage of the game in late 1899, 1900. Uh, the African felt was teeming with game. It was antelope, deer, the buck of, of all descriptions. So they would literally shoot for the table. So at a very young age, uh, most of the Boers started shooting. They become expert shots uh, and most of them were crack shots. Uh, they were used to the sporting rifles. So going back to the days of the Martini Henry and the Wesley Richards number two musket, uh, most of the photos you see, the guys have gone for sporting rifles uh, with, a, with a lighter stock. As you all know, if you're, if you're a shooter or a hunter, uh, you have a, a lighter rifle, especially if you're on horseback, uh, it makes a lot of difference. When the Boers were issued with the M1895 Mauser rifles uh, in 1899, as you know, uh, the full-length rifle is a fairly heavy uh, weapon. It's a military full-length rifle. Uh, so what they did basically was uh, a lot of them were just cut short, uh, really just to, make, uh, to, to save on weight. What they often tended to do too is, uh, and we'll talk in another uh, video about this, uh, the, the Mauser, the sporting Mauser, or often called the Plaisir Mauser, was a beautiful weapon. Um, and uh, of course it was a, a sporting rifle. It was semi-custom made. It had a cheek piece, beautiful lines, a pistol grip, normally checkered. Some of the guys would try and um, emulate that and copy uh, one of their rifles to look like a pleasure mouser. Um, some succeeded. I've got a few in my books which are actually very well done. Now, not only rifles had this, uh, this done to them. Uh, we've got a situation here where uh, there's an example of a uh, Lee Medford cavalry carbine, uh, which was captured by a Boer. Uh, I've actually uh, shown this once before in one of the earlier videos. Unfortunately, uh, it turned up at a gun show. It had been handed into the police for destruction. Uh, luckily, some policeman who had a, a head for history kept the, the butt and the fore end. The rest was destroyed, unfortunately. So I went to the trouble of getting a, a Lee Enfield Mark I star, which was uh, pretty clapped out. The barrel was very rusty and I got a gunsmith to shorten the barrel and make up uh, a wall piece, a, a wall hanger, just to at least keep uh, the uh, preserve history. The, the butt, as you will see, has a very nice uh, carving of the ZAR coat of arms. And on the front, where the, the burgers actually sporterized, cut back the stock, he's got a leopard's claw. It looks a bit like a leopard's claw anyway, or some sort of a cat's claw. So he's gone to the trouble of doing a, a really nice job. Now, this particular, getting back to the Mauser, this particular Mauser, uh, is an interesting one in itself, although it's cut back. Uh, it's serial number A2351, so it's one of the A-series uh, Mausers. Uh, it's been very neatly uh, inscribed here. It's not carved, but it's been inscribed with Indian ink. And unfortunately, it's very, very faint 120 years later. But what it says here is A.J. Smith, S-M-I-T. He gives the name of his farm, which is Pardon Platz. And he also says Vac 2, which is the second ward or second section of the commando and Carolina, ZAR. Now, Carolina is a small town in the ZAR, uh, not too far from, from Belfast. I've had a look at the map and we'll show you one where we found the farm Python Plots on an old FID, that's Field Intelligence Department map. And the Python Plots is fairly close to Belfast, more so than Carolina. Now, the story about the Carolina commando, and this may well have been one of the men, uh, they took a very prominent part in the Battle of Spion Kop. Uh, the Carolina commando comprised 88 men, the figures do vary slightly, and they were under the command of Commandant Oppermann. They scaled Allo Knoll in the very early hours of the morning, 
when they found the British had uh, entrenched themselves on what they thought was the summit of the hill, which of course wasn't the summit, and the British found themselves infiolated by Boer fire. The Carolina commando took the heaviest casualties. There were only 88 men, of which 55 were either uh, wounded or killed in action. So they sustained the highest casualties uh, for the Battle of Spin Cook, which was on the 24th of January 1900. Whether Mr. Smith, uh, Burger Smith, was there, we don't know, but I think there's a good possibility that he might have been. Um, since my book, and this appears in my part two book, I've now found out that there were three uh, men named A.J. Smith. One was a felt cornet. Unfortunately, he doesn't give his Christian name, just A.J. Smith. And there were two men who were both named A.J. Smith who were captured by the British and sent to POW camps. Both men were sent to India and both died whilst prisoners of war. So whether this belonged to one of those three men, I don't know. Uh, we found another A.A. Smith, uh, different initials, of the Carolina commando, but not an A.J. Smith. So at this stage, I can't prove exactly who this gentleman was, but we do know that he came from the farm, Pardon Platz. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the story. Thank you.